Hey everyone, today I'll be unboxing a very special Megabox figure. This one's called MB22MO Chiron. From what I've been told in the Chinese alphabet, MO are characters that stand for ink. So yeah, this is a very dark figure and definitely projects the look of an inky Chiron. I have no idea what the production run is on this particular model, but what I could tell you is 5T Toys had it for sale on their AliExpress store. I think they only had about 100 pieces available, and uh, from what I could see, they sold out within hours. I was very fortunate to get a hold of this one. If anyone happens to know, or at least has a good guesstimate of how many of these were made, I'd love to hear a comment on that. I already did a complete review of the original Chiron, so I'm going to keep this video fairly quick. So I'm going to show an unboxing, first impressions, a uh, step-by-step demo of Chiron's transformation, and then some final thoughts. For a more complete review of this figure, I'll leave a link to the original in the description. Again, I was very fortunate to get a hold of this, but not only that, I got the box basically in pristine shape, which is kind of a rare feat for overseas shipping. The package features some nice spot gloss coating, beautiful artwork, all shades of black, purple, and gold, and foil stamping on the Chinese characters here on the front. Some information on the back here, of course, produced by 5T Toys, and the character design was done by somebody by the name of Tsubashima Yuki. I don't know how many Beast Box or Mega Boxes he's designed, but at least for this one, he's the brain behind one of the very best figures 5 2 Toys has ever released. So, without further ado, we'll get this guy open with my trusty Red Devil. Welcome to the world, my little friend. Wow, what a beautiful figure. It's worth noting that 5 2 Toys has been increasingly including custom box chargers with figure repaints, at least over the past year. It remains to be seen if they're going to continue that trend, but all the same, it definitely rounds out a figure's overall presentation. So yeah, very lovely shade of lavender or deep purple. Nice frosted side panels. The way this thing catches the light is fantastic. I'm not sure what the graphic on the front is, but it's definitely fitting for this character. Very cool. The head, parts, and legs and midsections are very dark, translucent gray. I wouldn't quite call this pure black, but it definitely appears that way under normal lighting conditions. One thing to note is, unlike the original Chiron, its eyes are painted. I would guess that they did that since the entire head is translucent, and light piping probably wouldn't have quite the same effect as it does on the original. Man, look at this thing. You've got these variations of dark gray, kinds of cool grays and silver. One real fascinating thing is this dark purple, almost black to lavender gradient effect on the flames. This is not painted. It's all done with the plastic. It's a very interesting effect. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that done before. Let's see what else came in the box. We've got another one of those Megabox background graphics. Nicely illustrated instruction booklet. Now here's an interesting thing. You usually have to cut open the extras packet, and this one came with a little tear strip. That's new to me, and it's a very nice improvement on their packaging. So for extras, we got one of those box charger inserts and a catalog. These catalogs are usually outdated, and I've kind of been poking fun at that, but this time it's been updated with more recent releases within the past year even featuring the exclusive set they did for the one-time BoxCon showcase. I'm not sure if this was an oversight on 5-2 Toys' part, but neither of my Chirons came with a character card. Something else I want to check out real quick is how these look under alternate lighting conditions. So here's UV light on both of these characters. Very nice. The transparent parts really catch backlighting. It's a beautiful effect, very nicely done. Alright, let's go ahead and get this guy into box mode. It goes without saying, this is one of the more complex figures in the line. Now, one thing to note is it has an unusual sort of a clamp here, which does require a bit of force to pull loose. So you're just going to pop that off and the whole head and neck assembly comes up and you're just going to pull that over and out of the way. Then you can rotate the head down. One thing I'll point out about this transformation is it's kind of unusual. You have a connecting piece right here. Now this piece will just slide into this little groove easily, though when you transform it back from a cube, you need a small tool to push it out. Anything like a screwdriver or even a toothpick will work fine for that. So we can go ahead and take the head and slide that straight down so it's parallel with the front of the neck. So you're going to wind up with something that looks like this. Now the hindquarters are on a connecting piece which pops open like so and then hinges forward on both sides. We'll move these flame bits straight up and out of the way. So from the front, yeah, that just pops open like so and hinges down. The back piece needs to rotate 180 degrees from the hips. We can slide the horn down into the head and go ahead and flip that down and end and that just folds in under the chest. Now with that piece down what happens is you expose these little grooves here in the front part of the chest and that'll fit in those little notches. So we slide that in on both sides. These chest pieces lie flat inside this cavity. Back legs are easy to do just collapse them into themselves 
Once you get that collapse down, you'll turn the hoof out and inward, and you do the same thing on the other side. The front legs you want to keep straight so that you basically have this going on right here. Flames up, legs straight down. Now for the hind legs, they're on swivel hinges. So you get this little notch right here, that slides inside that little groove. So we're just going to pop them right in place. Now the hind legs are going to rotate forward, and the hoof needs to be inside the little flame groove right there. So basically what ends up happening is you have the hoof inside that little flame groove, and then you have these little circles touching on the hind leg and also on the front leg. Then you know you've got it set up correctly. Rotate that forward, get it connected inside that little space there. Okay, we're starting to see a flat side here. These flame pieces that are on hinges fold down on both sides. And here's the part that really tripped me up the first time I transformed it. This collapses down into that space. These flame panels fold down and inward. And the trick is, this piece needs to lie flat against the front here. So yeah, get that all collapsed in there just like so. Now the whole tail assembly is on a spine, essentially. So you're going to flip that up like so until it's flush. And at this point, we can take all these pieces, all the tail pieces, and just rotate them out there like that so they'll lay flat. So basically, we've got this look right here. The front legs have these little posts, and then there's this little connection piece right here. There's a hollow space inside the hind leg that the front leg collapses into. The front hoof will just lie flush up against the hind leg just like that. So if you've got it set up correctly, then basically that's what you're going to see on the side right here. Now this is really starting to look like a cube. The tailpiece functions as a lot of the finishing connections. So that'll lay flush against the top here. The main splays out so it lies flat against the back of the cube. Take note of the tabs on the hind leg and the flame appendage. These plug into separate ports on the flattened tailpiece. So you're basically going to scrunch that down into place. Same on the other side. So we've got these little ports right here. This little piece right here and that's going to connect into that hole. These little winglets slide down into these little grooves. And you got yourself a nice little cube here. Beautiful. I love that deep, almost a magenta sort of purple, transparent smoky black, silver tail wingtips. It's a fantastic little showpiece. And of course it pops right into its box charger. Moving on to a quick box grade, there's no change from the original Chiron at 27 out of 30. It's a character design with no room for improvement, outstanding color scheme, articulation, great construction quality and engineering, and in my opinion, it's one of the very best in 5G Toys Machine Cube series. Of course, this is just one guy's opinion, but I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. Let me know what you think about the MB22 Chiron, or if you have any other questions or comments. Thanks for watching.